What's up everybody? Today is still Monday. I just got done editing the last video and got it uploaded to YouTube just a few minutes ago. But I thought I would go over some things that I found today. After work, I went to a uh, couple of thrift stores. The first one being Habitat Restore, which is owned by Habitat for Humanity. If you don't know what that is, it's a company that they help build houses for the impoverished and the people in poverty, stuff like that. They have a thrift store in my uh, community where all the proceeds for it go towards building these houses. So half of the store is all furniture, as well as like floor tiles, uh, bathroom sinks, uh, drawers, uh, cabinets, stuff like that. Stuff that you would use to build the house, stuff they have left over has been donated to them. The other half is more like your typical thrift store. So I went in there today and picked up, first of all, these. These are all sealed, blank media, uh, Maxwell audio cassettes UR 90s. I got a stack of six of these. Oh, sorry, just got a sale. We'll get to that later. Got a stack of six of these for uh, 50 cents a piece, so I paid a total of three dollars. Oh, got dropping stuff all over. I'll put sold comps up on the screen. Now I got some other blank media, and this is something I've never seen, so I picked it up. These are blank eight track players, still sealed. So you can record eight tracks, basically. These are Scotch brand, Dyna Range, 90 eight track cartridges. I got, let me see, I got six of these as well. So, you know, I don't really know. I'll put a sold comp up on the screen, but I imagine they, they gotta go pretty good because I've never seen nothing like this. And then another one, which I did look these up, and these are, again, blank eight tracks, sealed. These are Memorex brand. And these actually go pretty decent too, so I'll put another sold comp up on the screen. And then another thing I got from there, hold on, I'll get it. All right, these are by far the creepiest thing that I've picked up. So I've looked these up. They appear to be like old plastic dolls that people back in the day would uh, do paper mache on them for some reason. So this wasn't originally a clown, I don't think. I think this was just like a little baby doll and someone turned it into, well, that. I paid $10 for all of these. Here's another one. And as you can see, if you see the arm where you see just the regular plastic, but then all this other stuff is paper mache around it. And these are a thing. You know, I looked them up, I found some on YouTube. This one, unfortunately, the legs a little messed up. You can see it moving where the actual doll leg is and the arm there too. But the rest of it seems to be intact. And I absolutely love them. Here's another one. And then here's this really big one riding an elephant with a umbrella on top of it that's all paper mache. So delicate. Um, I'm gonna put these in my booth. I'm not gonna try to ship these on eBay, although I did find some sold ones on eBay. Here's another one. Apparently, like this one and another one, this is supposed to be a swing that they're on. They probably should have strings coming up that they hold on to, but still, man, they're creepy. I couldn't pass them up. I paid 10 bucks for the whole bundle of them, and I'm gonna put them in my booth and we'll see what happens. Like this one, I think I'm gonna list at $30 in my booth. These other ones, maybe $10 a piece in my booth. So, yeah, I'll keep y'all updated on this. This is by far the creepiest thing I've found, and I love it. All right, so after I left Habitat for Humanity, or Habitat Restore is the name of the actual store, I went over to the Goodwill on the other side of town since I was over that way anyway, taking care of some other stuff. I only got one item. This is still sealed. Pay $2.99 for it. And this is a Frogger, uh, like an arcade game that you plug into your TV. Bibber been opened, uh, so yeah, I think I can get about 25 bucks for this. So yeah, that's basically what my Monday was. Um, tomorrow when I get off work, I'm gonna do the same thing. I don't, I don't feel comfortable bringing a camera into Goodwills or anything like that. I know some resellers have no problem doing that but won't record garage sales, I'm the opposite. I have no problem recording at a garage sale. In fact, today when I was at Goodwill, I had my camera down at my side recording because I thought maybe I'll get some footage and then I'll talk over it and right away this old guy was like why are you recording so I turned it off 
even though it's allowed to be recorded in Goodwill or thrift stores or anywhere in public, you can record as long as you're not videotaping the actual people, you're just recording the items. In fact, in the Goodwill I go to, they actually make an announcement to say, hey, we're fine with you recording. We're fine with you taking pictures of the merchandise for social media or whatever you want to use it for. Just be you know, thoughtful of other patrons there and do not record or take pictures without their consent. But still, this guy, old guy, kind of got, well, for lack of a better word, got pissed off right away because I was recording. So I turned off the camera. But anyway, still walked out with an item, so I'm going to make some money. But yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Hey everybody, so it's Tuesday morning. I got four orders going out that I thought I would share with you real quick. So yeah, let's just jump into it. A while ago, I bought a bunch of Sports Illustrated and other sports magazines. Most of them were Michael Jordan or Chicago Bulls related. Uh, I've only listed six. I'm really not happy with the buy. I shouldn't have did it, but I did it anyway. But uh, this one here sold for $20 plus shipping. So I'm happy about that. The reason this one sold for so much is it doesn't have like the address label where it had been sent to somebody with a subscription. Those are the ones actually worth money. Most of the other ones in the box have that so the value goes way down. But I might end up just doing an auction for all of them together. All right, next I have a couple of figures here. These are s'mores, little figures, uh, Halloween. I don't know why they're selling in June, but that's all right. They still got the tags on them. This came out of a, a large picker lot that I bought. I've made a ton of money on them. This is some of the last stuff I have left. I think I have one or two items from that lot listed. Everything else is gone. But yeah, so you see a little witch and the little devil. So these sold for $30 plus shipping. So not a bad sale. And then the other sale was actually by the same buyer. They requested that I combine the uh, the items into one shipping so i'll do that no problem first off is a sealed copy of just dance 2014 this is another xbox 360 connect game as well as is this one which is connectables these sold for connectables sold for 16 dollars, and just dance sold for 19.99 free shipping on both but uh yeah i'll put those all in one box and get it out all right, so real quick, I thought I would talk about how I'm gonna ship this magazine. Obviously, I don't want it to be damaged, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to bubble wrap the magazine itself, just a little bit. And then I have cardboard behind. <clears throat> and then somewhere, if I find it, I have another cardboard piece that I'm going to put over the top. All right, so this should protect the item in this bubble mailer and get to the buyer just fine with no issues. Slide that in here, and then let me check the weight on this real quick. Okay, so we're still good. It's a 10 ounces. So, yep, still going to go first class and nice and protected. So, yeah, that's how I'm going to ship that. All right, so I got all the porters, orders packed right here. Uh, all three are going first class, so on my way to work. Well, not on my way to work, but at lunch, I'll drop them off at the post office uh, by my job. And so I went ahead and did a little math. Total for these, after fees, after shipping and everything, comes out to $68.53. So the games are all profit because I've already made my money back on that. Uh, the s'mores is all profit because I've already made my money back on that picker's lot I got a long time ago. The Sports Illustrated, unfortunately, is not all profit. I made $17.11, but like I said, I got $20 into that lot. So I actually need to sell <clears throat> at least one more magazine, and then I'll be in the profit. I might put the rest of the magazines, just put them all up for auction. Haven't decided yet, but that's what I'm thinking about doing. I'm going to have to do some research and see if Sports Illustrated, Michael Jordan... Uh, magazines selling a lot like that pretty good at auctions if so that's what i'm going to do but uh yeah that's it for now uh, i'll see y'all after work hopefully i find something when i go to goodwill all right what's up everybody it's tuesday night uh home from work did some yard work and everything else uh did go to goodwill i did not find anything but i did find these the other day at goodwill so i thought i would show you these because i haven't listed them or anything yet i actually just got them cleaned up got the shoestrings out of the laundry today uh these are a pair of jordans i gotta get that price tag out of there but if you can see 
right there paid 12.99 for these so i paid up a little bit usually the goodwill shoes aren't this much but they know they're jordan so you know they're going to put a higher price on it so what i thought i would do is show you how to look up shoes now these don't work on every shoes i know they work on jordans they work on adidas uh brands like that reeboks but uh so i'm going to do it on my phone but first i'm going to show you what i'm talking about so you know they're jordans but to figure out you know God, there's so many different pairs of jordans you got to figure it out if you look and i don't know how well you'll be able to see this but if you see the numbers right eh, right below the shoe size there's a string of numbers this one 414-571-103 so let me get on my phone here and record this i'm going to look these up <clears throat> And I'll put it right over here, hopefully. I did pretty good last time. Hopefully I do good this time. So I'm in eBay. I'm gonna look up Nike Air Jordans. And then I'm gonna type in that code right after that. 414571. 414571. So those first six digits, that is the type of shoe this is. The next three are any type of uh like variations if they're different colors i know some of these actual type of shoes have black soles so there's different variations this one is 103 so dash 103 pull that up and there you go see these are exact shoes that i have so once again filter and we're going to go to solds and for these because they're shoes condition is used and shoe size here <clears throat> these are a size 12 so i'm going to put that in so three pairs sold <laughs> sorry three pairs have sold recently <clears throat> well i don't know why there's some other ones down there too but anyway so it looks like a pair sold for 68 dollars plus shipping a pair sold for 115 dollars plus shipping and a pair sold for $109 plus shipping. These ones I got are in pretty good condition. They're not perfect. Uh, if you look that yellow, I tried to get it off. I used OxyClean. I tried some bleach. Nothing was getting it off. But other than that, they are definitely pretty clean. There's a little bit of wear on the tongue, but I cleaned them up as best I could. There's no scuffs or anything like that, so it's really good. The holographic thing that came on these actual type of shoes are still there. So, yeah, like, see, these aren't perfect, the ones I'm looking at here. You can see there's some scuffs and stuff. Uh, I think I'm going to kind of shoot for the moon here. I'll probably put them up for uh, maybe $105, maybe $110. But, yeah, I got those the other day. Like I said, I didn't find nothing today at Goodwill. I went on my lunch break. I went after work just empty. A whole bunch of resellers in there with carts full. So, clearly, they found stuff before I did. But, you know, that's the game. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to get these listed. Uh, I also cleaned up my lawn chairs. The two that I found a few weeks ago, the vinyl tubing ones, and then the one that I just found in the last video. I got both, all three of those are now listed on my uh, eBay channel. Uh, the two vinyl tube ones I listed for $55 plus shipping. And the other one, I think I put it up for $95 plus shipping. So yeah, we'll see how they sell. If we get that or if someone sends a message and makes an offer or something like that. But that's it. Uh, I'll get to you with uh, probably tomorrow morning with anything that's sold today. I know we got one big item that sold today that I'm really happy about. So, yeah, see you in that one. Hey, what's up, everybody? So it's Wednesday morning. Two orders sold yesterday, so I'm going to go over them real quick. All right. Uh, like I said, it's only two, but they're they're decent sales. One's decent. The other one's pretty, pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, here's the first one. This is like a uh, button-down, short-sleeve collared shirt. Marvel brand. Uh, it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Got this at Goodwill. I paid uh, $4 for it. And it sold today for, or last night for $28.95 plus shipping. So not a bad sale at all, really. All right, and since it's just a shirt, it doesn't weigh a whole lot. So this is going to go by uh, uh, first class mail. So I'm gonna just stick it in this big bubble mailer here. And 
and that's it second order is a lot better this is another goodwill find i got it i think two weeks ago at goodwill paid three dollars for it and it sold yesterday for 84.95 plus shipping on top this is a uh creepy collar creepy crawler i don't know if you remember these from when you were a kid or your kids were a kid or whatever but yeah this is a 2006 model they don't make these anymore but this thing's brand new the box is open but none of it's ever been used the 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 molds are still i think i talked about this before the molds are still in the packaging the ink's never been our ink or whatever the gel is that you put in there none of it's ever been used so yeah this is this is a great find if you find these even used these go for good money so i would definitely keep my eye out for these all right so because of the size of this box it's bigger than it's longer than 12 inches uh i'm gonna actually have to franken box together a couple of number seven so i thought i'd show you how to do that real quick so i'm going to take my first number seven get it together and then i'm going to take my uh box cutter here and cut cut two edges out and then cut that little bit of tape and take out this whole panel so it's like this then I'm gonna do the same thing with another number seven All right, so now I got two number sevens with the sides cut off. Now I'm just gonna stick them together. And then I can make it shrink in and out as I need it to. So I'm actually gonna have it come in a little bit. There. So if you see there, now it fits perfect. I'm just gonna put some packing paper here and here. keep it from sliding back and forth put in my thank you card and then I'm gonna just close it up That's it. That's how I freaking box a box together. And it makes it nice and easy. The little bit of dimension change isn't going to affect the, uh, the actual shipping cost. So, yeah, very handy. All right, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. We have two items going out the door. Uh, first one up is this right here. This is a antique Model T uh, Ford lantern kerosene lantern that would go on you know one of the old cars got this at a, an auction i paid twenty dollars for it so it's really cool here's where the wick would come out fill up the kerosene in the bottom here very cool piece i don't know if you can tell it says ford on the top there but uh yeah this sold for 75 dollars plus shipping and the other item that sold <clears throat> is this uh, Corgi Batmobile from the 1930s style car. The, the Obviously the cars, the toy itself is not from the 30s, but the, the style of the cars from the 30s. Uh, really nice piece. I'm a big Batman fan. Picked this up for $3 at an estate sale and it sold today overseas. It's an overseas sale and it sold for $44.99 plus shipping, or I'm sorry, free shipping. Uh, should only cost me about a little over four dollars to ship so I'm gonna get these packed up get them weighed enter them into my spreadsheet and then I'm going to attempt a new video thing I'll try to show you what my spreadsheet looks like and we'll look at what my sales were like Monday through today 
So nothing including what, what went on in the last video over the weekend. So this will only be things that sold Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. All right, so this is the spreadsheet I use. I'll show you real quick what I do. Over here, I put in the date of when an item sold, the item description, just a brief description of what it is. The amount that it sold for, that's the amount that the buyer actually pays. The eBay fee, I have it as a formula. So it takes whatever is in the C column, multiplies that by 0 0.1235, which is what eBay's percentage fee is, plus it takes out an additional 0.3 cents, so 30 cents basically, because eBay does charge that. Uh, after that, eBay payout, that is what I actually get after eBay takes their cut. Uh, and then next is shipping, which I manually put in the shipping because that's gonna get subtracted from your eBay payout. So if you don't know this, you pay shipping up front, and then if the buyer paid for shipping, you get reimbursed once eBay sends you your payout, all right? So for instance, uh, let me find an item here. St. Louis patches, I sell these for $5, so the buyer paid basically $1.85 for shipping for each one of these. Uh, eBay took their cut, I end up with five sixty-seven, dollars and then uh, here's what I got paid out. So not a lot, not a great example, but still. Uh, 59.13, that includes, oh, the cat hat. I sold the cat hat, vintage rare hat. I sold that for $50. I'm sorry, $55 plus shipping. So they paid 59.13. And then I got 47.40, even though it was a $55 sale. 367 came out. I ended up with 43.73. So that's how that works. So if we go down here to the bottom, and if I look at just what sold starting on Monday, which would be the 14th right here with the Sports Illustrated. Let me grab all of these and put them over here. And we can total those up to see what we made. So from Monday until, well basically this is just Monday through Wednesday, $266.58. So that's pretty good for, uh, you know, three days out of the week. That's not bad at all. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. You got to see some items I picked up at thrift stores throughout the weekdays. Uh, that's just going on lunch breaks and going after work. You also got to see some sales during the weekdays, which those aren't the strongest days, but you know, it was a pretty decent week. I'm happy with it. And now we're getting ready to jump into the weekend. Like I said, it's Thursday night. Uh, tomorrow's actually a federal holiday. So just got declared so that means i don't have to work so i am going to hit a bunch of garage sales that were posted uh for friday i'll have the camera with me i'll record friday saturday try to get a video out saturday night or sunday all right anyway thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one